So, you must remember, in Riggler's double wall sign, uh, we see double wall was a bubble. But normal, we must see the only one side from the inner side of the bubble wall. Riggler's double wall sign. False Riggler's double wall sign. Gas seen on both sides of the bubble. A wall is contained within adjacent bubble. There are no black triangles or sharp angles on the outside of the bubble wall. Maybe this part of the bubble have adhesion or light act, uh, light, uh, light like this uh, due to motility. We don't know. But here we didn't see double wall on this side and this side of the bubble. You can compare with this picture. Here another bubble wall, no overlay, but we see double wall side. Compare and remember. Sometimes when we expect perforation from the patient, but if we want to see the circle sign, we must uh, ask a patient to stand still. But some patient cannot stand still. This is most of the patients with palsy, so we can use decubitus positioning. Use of the decubitus position can demonstrate pneumoperitoneum in a patient who cannot be positioned for an erect chest X-ray to be performed. Gas rise to the upper part of the abdomen and so will be seen on the side of the abdominal X-ray imaging. This projection is not commonly performed, but to the patients with palsy, we can use decubitus position. You must understand why we lie patient on the uh, on the left side. This is the wrong picture. We must lie patient on the left side, not on the right, because on the left side of the body we have stomach and it contains gas bubble. Sometimes when we uh, put patient like this, we look at the, to the picture and see free gas, but it's not free gas, it's only gas bubble of the stomach, uh, which touch the abdominal cavity wall. And so we can perform operation without need. And we break the main rule of all medicine, do no harm. No peritoneum in the cubital projection. So here we see the stomach. It's gas in the abdomen. It's gas in, into the different parts of the bowel. And here we see the free gas. Chiloiditis phenomenon example. Sometimes we see on the right part of the abdomen sickle sign, and under this circle sign we have part of the bowel. And th we think about perforation first of all. But you must know, gas forms a near crescent shape under the right hemidiaphragm. There is However, a thick hemidiaphragm partly consisting of bowel wall. Gas can be seen to lie within bowel. Importantly, this patient with hyperexpanded lungs due to the emphysema and did not have acute abdominal pain. In this case, we must look to the other side and think about 
Do we have free gas here? Or do we haven't this gas? Small bowel obstruction or illus. If a patient presents with clinical features of obstruction, then radiological assessment can be very helpful in determining the level of obstruction. And occasionally, <coughs> the case, there are features visible on a plain abdominal X-ray that may help locate the level of obstruction. They are partly determined by a knowledge of small and large bowel anatomy. See the page of on normal bowel gas pattern. Dilation more than 3 cm of the small bowel is considered abnormal. However, the longer the segment of the bowel that is dilated, the more likely bowel dilatation represents a genuine obstruction. Small bowel obstruction or illus. We have which of this part of the bowl is more than 3 cm. Small bowel obstruction. Centrally located multiple dilated loops of gas filled bowel arrowheads. Lower canavitis arrow are visible, confirming this is small bowel. Evidence of previous surgery, not the anastomosis site, red ring. This suggests adhesions in the likely case of obstructions. Double bubble sign. Is a feature of pediatric imaging seen on radiograph or prenatal ultrasound in which the two air filled bubbles are seen in the abdomen, representing two discontinuous loops of bowel in a proximal or high small bowel obstruction. Major difference between small bowel obstruction and large bowel obstruction. In the case of lower bowel obstruction, high is lesser than width. In case with small bowel obstruction, high is greater than width. Sentinel loop. A required loop of small bubble is dilated in this patient with acute pancreatitis. This appearance is not diagnostic for intraabdominal inflammation, but rather an occasional associated feature. Large bubble obstruction. The most common causes of large bubble obstruction they are colorectal carcinoma and diverticular structures. Less common causes are hernias or valvulus twisting of the bubble on its own mesentery. Adhesions do not commonly cause large bowel obstruction. Radiological appearances of large bowel obstruction differ from those of small bowel obstruction. However, with large bowel obstruction, there is often coexisting small bowel dilation proximally. Dilation of the second more than 9 cm and more than 6 cm for the rest of the colon is considered abnormal. Large bowel obstruction. Here the colon is dilated down to the level of the distal distending colon. There is the impression of soft tissue density at the level of obstruction. No gas is seen within the sigmoid colon. Obstruction is not absolute in this patient as a small volume of gas has reached the sigmoid. Sigmoid volvulus. The sigmoid colon is most prone to twisting that other segments of the large bubble because it is mobile on its own mesentery, which arises from a fixed point in the left iliac fossa. Twisting at the root of the mesentery results in the formation of an enclosed loop of sigmoid colon, which becomes very dilated. If untreated, this can lead either to perforation due to excessive dilation or to ischemia due to compromise of the blood supply. Sigmoid volvulus uh, sometimes com compare with coffee bean sign, but it's too, too rarely. <sighs> this look of coffee bean
origin because we have twist of mesenteria root. Sack of vulvulus. The sacrum is most frequently a retroperitoneal structure and therefore uh, not susceptible to twisting. However, in up to 20% of the individuals there is congenital incomplete peritoneal covering of the sacrum. This formation of a mobile sacrum on a mesentery such that it no longer lies in the right iliac fossa. This is a normal variant, but it is associated with increased incidence of folding or twisting of the sacrum, sacral volvulus, which may be complicated by obstruction, vascular compromise or perforation. Sacral volvulus. The massively dilated sacrum no longer lies in the right iliac fossa. Rather, this is occupied by a small bowl, red outline. This a small bowl is identified by the valvular connectivities because of folds that cross the full width of the bowl. Second volvulus was confirmed by laparotomy. So, here we see small bowl, and this is the part. Of the second. Bowel wall inflammation. Occasionally, abdominal x rays show signs of inflammation in patients with inflammatory bowel disease. Abnormalities may relate to either acute or chronic stages of diseases. Thumb printing. Bowler head sign. The bowler head sign represents the appearance of a sessile colonic polyp observed at an oblique angle on a double contrast barium enema. The orientation, orientation of the dome of the bowler head sign can help differentiate a polyp from a diverticulum. Other intramural objects such as a stool or air bubbles can also rarely create the bowler head sign. Lead pipe column. This patient with ulcerative colitis have a featureless segment of transverse colon with loss of the normal haustral markings. The lead pipe appearance is associated with long-standing ulcerative colitis. The distal bowel is always involved in this uh, disease, but if there is no air in the descending colon, the segment of colon is not evidently abnormal. lead pipe. Toxic megacolon. Toxic megacolon is a potentially life-threatening condition characterized by the elevation of the large bowel without obstruction. In the context of acute bowel inflammation, this may be due to inflammatory bowel disease, especially ulcerative colitis, or other causes of colitis such as infection. A mental cake sign. Uh, it is abnormally thick and greater omentum. It refers to infiltration of the abdominal fat by material of soft tissue density. Typically, it is caused by infiltration of metastatic tumors or after pancreatitis. Another cause of is lymphoma, in which a mental caking is usually associated with lymphadenopathy. Barium X ray fluoroscopy. A barium X-ray is a test to look at the outline of any part of your digestive system. Not your, of course, patient digestive system. Barium is a white liquid that shows up clearly on an X-ray. Once it is inside the body, it coats the inside of the esophagus, stomach or bowel and shows up the outline of the organs on the X-ray. If there is a tumor, it shows up as an irregular outline extending out from the wall of the affected part of the body. Barium liquid does not do you any harm and passes through your digestive system, so you don't absorb it. There are several different types of barium tests. A barium swallow, this is most often used to look at the inside of the food pipe, esophagus or stomach. 
a barium enema. This looks at the large bowel colon and the back passage rectum double contrast enema named irigoscopy. Uh, I write here food pipe like the example because you cannot say to the patient esophagus because most of all patients don't, didn't know what does it mean but you must uh, say in some words that patient can understand you can say this is the uh, tube which connects to your mouth to your uh, uh, to your gastric uh, to your gaster uh, so patient can understand about what you're saying Irigoscopy. here on the picture you can see barium and uh, you can see this bubble with air thank you for your attention